Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do another Turner Syndrome video. <laughs> one I wanted to do on human growth hormone and that side of Turner syndrome treatments. So as I've said in my story, I never took human growth hormone. Um, I got to, I think last time I was checked, I'm like 4'11 and a half. I'm just under five foot without any help. Um, so I never, I never fall off the charts. So my parents never felt the need to give it to me. And they were told so many scary side effects and risks that if I didn't need it, they didn't feel it was necessary to give it to me. So they just watched me really closely and probably would have started it if I started slowing really badly or if I dropped off the charts or anything like that. But I never took it. Um, and that is, again, something very situational, whether it really would be worth it, whether you really would benefit from it or not because it it all depends on how much again you're able to produce specifically your body on its own that's very situational so I thought I would talk about that a little bit and kind of the side of it that is height so I found by googling a definition of HGH that actually tells a little bit about how this is connected to hormones and how it really is tied to Turner syndrome as far as why this would be a treatment. So height and shortness is a symptom of Turner syndrome. It is something that comes from not being able to produce enough HGH yourself to, to grow at a normal rate, to grow to a normal height. All of that is how that works. Um, the definition that I found says HGH is a naturally occurring substance in the body. It is made in the pituitary gland, which is at the center of your brain. This substance is in your body from birth, and it is at its highest level of production during your adolescent years. So it is very tied to hormones, very tied to are you able to produce enough of that hormone. Again, all about the hormones and all of those systems. So the difference in heights with Turner Syndrome women before and after taking HGH or even without it and with it can be very staggering. A normal Turner Syndrome woman without HGH is typically around 4'8". And I have heard cases of a woman getting to 5'1", 5'2", with HGH, depending on how their body is responded. That is another aspect to it, is it's all about how your body responds to those injections. It is mostly through injections from everything I've heard heard. I have not heard of another version of it. Most of it's just been injections and that is another aspect to it. Um, being able to handle those injections, how you yourself respond to needles, stuff like that is an element to it that you'll have to deal with. And you would need to talk to an endocrinologist about when the best age to start that would be. If you're a mom of a Turner Syndrome baby, you, you want to make sure if they're going to need it that you start her at the right age to really help her. And I am not actually sure what the typical age for starting that is. I know I've heard as young as three or four starting it and that can be pretty intense but there is major growth spurts on those ages starting around that age so I could see the importance of starting it at that age. It just, oh man, I would not envy a mom having to give injections to a three or four year old. I'm sure that would be traumatizing for both of you. Although you would get used to it, but still, it would not be fun. And dealing with the insurance part of it and making sure it's covered, making sure you're getting the right dosage. I think there might be different variations of it also, like different brands of it? I'm not totally sure. Not having taken human growth hormone, I am not for sure on some of the smaller details of it, so if anybody has those details, please leave them in the comments below and kind of fill in my blanks because I'm only going off of what I have been exposed to and that was 
not even a part of it as far as taking it. So I know I would have issues with needles. I have amazing veins for like getting blood drawn and stuff like that, but I hate needles. And so just an injection, bleh, that does not sound fun. I, I know there are a few different places you can do it, that different places have different effects as far as how you feel it. And a lot of what I've heard is doing it in the thigh can be best or that's what's normal and that can be not as bad as far as how much it hurts or how much you feel it um just because there is a good cushion of fat there that can kind of help the other aspect to this is kind of just the height part of turner syndrome and being short can definitely have its downsides um it can be frustrating it can have all different kinds of psychosocial effects um it definitely is a very dominating experience to be that drastically short or that much shorter than most of the other people around you. I have only had one time where I was taller than somebody that was my age. One time. From what I knew, she didn't even have anything of affecting that at all. She just was very short. She just had that in her genetics that she was very short. So that was a very interesting experience. I had never had that before. There is some getting used to it that you have to do and even if you take human growth hormone, more than likely you're still not going to be super tall because you're already starting with an average for Turner Syndrome women of 4'8", and that is for classic. That is not for mosaic. Mosaic, I think most of them can get to a normal height on their own. Mosaic, I don't actually know the average height. On in Docker and Web, it says there can be an 8 inch difference in the height of a woman without human growth hormone and with. There is a getting used to being short that comes along with that that you really have to just go through to get used to it it can really be something that you have to process I know it has given me very funny stories and kind of a unique perspective on life as far as learning how to take jokes learning how to kind of fight for my own position fight for my own place and be able to assert my own confidence and feel good about that so, all of that being said, I know these treatments can be very costly as well. The average I found in my research was actually ten to forty thousand dollars a year, and that of course will depend on your insurance coverage, where you're going for treatments, and how long of treatment is necessary. But it can still be very, very expensive, and that is also something to consider when making that choice or when looking into HGH treatment. So I hope this video helped you in some way. I hope it was informative. If you have any other information or comments or thoughts or experiences with HGH, I would love to hear them in the comments below. If you have any corrections to what I've said or stuff to add to fill in the blanks, please leave that below as well. I want to get the best information out there as possible. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. If you are not already subscribed, click the screen and subscribe and then you can see when the next next video comes out and I will see you guys in that one. Bye!